So, for the last week or two, I have been reviewing handhelds and games in the United States of America. My first review was in New York, the Big Apple, home of the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building and Trump Towers. After that, I headed to Philadelphia, ate some Philly cheesesteaks and ran up the steps from the Rocky movies. So, after all these exciting adventures, I have been magically whisked away to... Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. So now I have told you everything about the area I am in, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about today's episode. I was recently in a retro game store over in Philly and I picked up this lovely box Sega Nomad. Yeah! Sadly for me and my fellow Europeans, the Sega Nomad never saw a European release, so I have waited over 20 bloody years to finally get one. This has always really baffled me to be honest, as from what I can tell in the UK, the Mega Drive and Master System both kicked the NES and SNES's ass sales wise. On top of all of this, as many kids in my class at school seem to own Game Gears as they did Game Boys. Sega was far, far, far more popular in the UK than Nintendo. So many children in my class thought it was weird that I had Nintendo systems. It was very unusual. From what I can tell though, on this side of the pond in the United States, it was the complete opposite scenario. They accredited the NES for saving console gaming here, a system in which was a complete flop back home in England. People either stuck with their microcomputers, or if they felt daring, they got a master system. Right, so if this is the case, and Nintendo were really strong in America, and Sega were really strong in Europe, then why in the bloody hell did they only release this Nomad in the States? What the hell, Sega? No wonder you only release third party games now. In 1995, the system was released exclusively in North America. Not even Japan got a sniff of this one, as the Nomad was never officially released worldwide. When the system was first released, it instantly had a library of over 500 games. Because the Nomad is essentially a portable version of the Genesis, aka the Sega Mega Drive. So owners could finally take their home console games from their collection at home and play the exact same cartridges on the go. Yeah! The Nomad actually started its life in a rather peculiar way. A year before the Nomad's release back in Japan, Sega released the Mega Jet, a portable version of the Mega Drive designed for use on Japan airline flights. This was a condensed version of the Mega Drive and required a connection to a television screen and a power source. So outside of the airline flights, it was only useful in cars equipped with a television set and a cigarette lighter receptacle. Sega then planned to release a new handheld console as a successor to the Game Gear. Sega originally intended to produce a system which was to feature a touchscreen interface, similar to handhelds today. However, such technologies were very expensive at the time, so Sega chose to suspend the idea and instead release the Genesis Nomad, a handheld version of the Genesis. So Sega, you essentially gave us a portable master system followed by a portable Mega Drive. So where's my bloody portable Saturn? When I look a bit into the history of Sega in 1995, the whole company appeared to be a little bit of a logistical mess. So I can see exactly why the system was only released in one region. According to the former head of American Sega Research and Development, the Nomad was not actually intended to be a Game Gear replacement and believes that there was little planning from Sega of Japan for the new handheld. Including the Nomad, Sega at the time were supporting eight different systems. These included the Saturn, the Mega Drive, the Game Gear, the Pico, the Master System, the Mega CD and 32X add-ons. Over in Japan, the Mega Drive had never been successful. However, the Saturn was more successful than the Sony PlayStation. So Sega decided to focus the majority of its energy into the Saturn. So Sega clearly had no clear direction at the time and was just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what would stick. And sadly, this is one of the systems that didn't. 
Now you know about the history of the system, let's take a modern look at how the system handles today. The Sega Nomad features a D-pad and six action buttons, just like the Sega Mega Drive six button arcade pad. The system features a port on the bottom to allow the plug-in of an additional controller and another hole to allow the use of headphones. The top of the system features an on-off button, a DC input to play your games from a wall socket, a cartridge slot for your Genesis games, and most interestingly of all, an AV output so that you can play your games on the big screen. If the current Nintendo NX rumours are true, then it could turn out that the console is just a modern day take on the Nomad! <laughs> when loading up a game and playing it, the first thing I noticed was that the screen quality is a hundred times better than that of the Game Gear. The Nomad looks nowhere near as blurry and washed out. I wouldn't say the screen quality is as good as a 3DS, but I would say the backlight in hand with the picture quality is every bit as good as the Game Boy Advance SP, which came out close to a decade later. Like the Game Gear however, the battery life on this thing isn't great, and the extreme bulkiness of this device also brings its portability into question in the modern world. Overall, I find the functionality of the Sega Nomad far superior to that of the Sega Game Gear. I feel its better picture quality, combined with its ability to play Genesis games, make this system a winner. And the only reason it never did well, I feel, was purely because of bad marketing. If the marketeers at Sega weren't complete idiots, then they could have named this system something like the Mega Drive or Genesis 2, to expand the library of the Genesis. However, those idiots went and just made a Mega Drive in a different shape and named that the Mega Drive 2 instead. Complete morons. In terms of functionality today, there are just much more convenient ways now in which you could play the Mega Drive on the go. The 3DS and the JXD both come to mind for example, but as an Englishman who missed out on this release in my region, there is just something cool about this system. This handheld is the retro gaming equivalent to one of those giant American gas guzzling muscle cars. No real functional purpose, but wow, it's really cool to own. Cheerio! From Sega, the Mega Drive, with Sonic the Hedgehog game, 16-bit console which plays over a hundred exciting high-tech games with high-quality graphics. Toys R Us price, $126.94. There's millions such a real